Crow's Country is a classic survival horror game with a retro aesthetic that was influenced by early iterations of Final Fantasy, Silent Hill, and Resident Evil. The narrative centers on a young agent named Mara Forrest who, while looking for a missing individual in an abandoned theme park, stumbles into a number of strange things. The plot is captivating because it is both linear and complex, with a focus on the main antagonist's discovery of a real gold mine that ends up ruining Elaine Marshall's life. Elaine was a little girl who had an accident at the amusement park that led to its closure. In this video, we'll delve into the story's storyline, examine its several facets, and ultimately provide an explanation for how the events taking place in Crow's Country came to pass. So take a seat, unwind, and enjoy the video. The text of the game begins in the year 2024 and jumps back 34 years to the year 1990. Special Agent Mara Forrest is driving the car and she is tasked with looking into the disappearance of Edward Crow, the proprietor of Crow Country Amusement Park. As she enters the gated rundown park, she discovers an injured guy who is screaming for assistance and describing being attacked by monsters. Mara assists him and carries him to her car before returning to the area to look into it only to discover the terrible creatures the man had described. This park clearly has something going on. As Mara travels on, she encounters a wide range of people who either support her or attempt to derail her. These people include Julie Barron, a lawyer, Marvin Tumble, a businessman, and Tolman, a former partner of Edgar Crow, along with his daughter Natalie Crow. She eventually divulges the truth about what really transpired with Crow Country by the game's conclusion. Elaine Marshall is actually known as Mara Forrest, and the reason Crow Country was shut down and the afflicted creatures known as guests appeared was because Edward Crow, while on a mining trip in Brazil, discovered a pool. As he plunges into the water and turns into a monstrous creature, Edward makes Elaine swear to kill him. When Elaine beats him, she eventually makes her way out of there with the other survivors. At the conclusion of the game, Elaine receives a letter from Edward Crow that reads 2106 uninhabitable ruin. We come 1988. Last chance, warn stop, change. When the planet becomes uninhabitable in the year 2106, humans devise a means of traveling back in time to the year 1988 in order to warn the people of that era about the unavoidable future. They did this by using technology to create a pool that allows time travel, but they had no idea that this would have dire repercussions. The first guy, Crew, was mutilated and lost most of his speech function. Edward named this first-time visitor the guest as he found him at the same moment that he found the pool. Though it is mentioned that he may have found the pool, several years prior, back when he was a child. Edward didn't say anything to him, but it forced him to put the guest in a cage that was broken into by Elaine Marshall, a 15-year-old who had been attacked by the guest and who herself was a visitor to the Crow's Country Amusement Park with her parents. When she was attacked by the guest, she caught an unidentified sickness and ended up in the hospital. Edward, who took full responsibility for the little girl's condition, worked his way to find a cure for Elaine. He brought in as many guests from the pool as he could to aid in the development of the cure, which took up to two years to complete, during which time Elaine, who somehow survived the disease, fled the hospital and sought revenge on Edward for ruining her life. Though at this point in time, she was still suffering from the disease and may have had little time for survival. At the start of the video, you can see her urging herself to remember her false name, Mara Forrest. The fact that she refuses to tell definitely when Marvin asks what kind of pistol she is carrying, that she isn't allowed to smoke or drink coffee, and the comments from others stating that she is too young to be a police officer all serve as more evidence yet that she is not a law enforcement official. Crow, who was also infected, is eventually encountered by Elaine, and at the expense of his own life, Crow gives Elaine the antidote and heals her along with the other six survivors. 
Thanks to Edward's perseverance, he manages to create a treatment for the virus or bacteria that may be affecting everyone, potentially turning back time to remove the uninhabitable conditions of 2106. Naturally, we won't know this till they reveal a game that is the sequel to Crow's Country. But of course, until then, this is just a game theory.